the south the south half is uh, polycarbonate glazing, uh, triple walled polycarbonate, and then the north half half is an insulated two by six uh, mineral wool insulation. All right. and here the fans just kicked in because the sun's shining. So I think right now I have the thermostat set at 65 or 70, somewhere in there. You can only heat as much as you have stored. Mm -hmm. So once you've used up what you have stored, you you end up being more just a geothermal heat system. One thing that I'm seeing is the condensation. Mm -hmm. Does that present complications in the greenhouse? Yeah. So every greenhouse, you're going to have a lot of condensation. So you want to make sure that you're prepared to deal with that. Uh, this is, is triple walled polycarbonate. Uh, when, you, when you buy that, they have real nice instruction sheets. Uh, but you know, you've got air layers in between there. Right. And you, you'll get condensation in those. In those layers. Yep. So the the, the guidelines that, that they give you is um, when, you, when you cut it, the top, you, they, you can get by this aluminum tape yep. uh, that you put across the top so that uh, nothing gets in there. And then on the bottom, you need to have a, a mesh tape so to that let the that moisture water, out. Yep, yep. So that water can can evaporate uh, or run out the bottom uh, when it condenses. It took me about a year. Okay. So I mean, the design and planning stuff. I'd been uh, reading research and stuff for years. But, okay. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, I did a bunch of engineering simulations and calculations so beforehand as part of my research project kind of refine some of the design elements and put together design guides for folks. Oh, it's much nicer in here. <laughs> I had temp sensors at four feet, and then I actually they're still on the post yet. Um, I don't have them all logging, but um, yeah, that's my ten foot one. And really, the air circulation pattern in here uh, is enough, like when the fans are running, that you don't get stratification of the temperature, at least not significantly. So it's it's really not worth it to run your tubes up to the top, which is something that I think a lot of folks a lot mm -hmm. of folks do, but you don't need to. Is there a tremendous uh, uh, increase in, in uh, productivity of the sun in the arch versus a, a uh, an angled um, wall, straight angled wall? It, uh, it just depends on what kind of growing you want to do. So if you're really focused on winter or winter only growing, usually the flat surface is better because you'll get more efficient light transfer during a short period of time. But if you're doing year round, more of a curve thing is more multi-purpose uh, for for all seasons. Okay. So, from where we're standing right here now, how deep is it to the bottom of the battery? It'd be four feet. Four feet. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Can you explain the whole battery thing? Just yeah. For this? Yeah. I I have a little bit. I have yeah. a poster too that okay. kind of shows shows uh, some of the CAD models of what it looks like and stuff. This here is actually from the Moses conference last year you know, that I kind of use for tours to help visualize oh, yes. it. Um, so, yeah, so that how a climate battery works, it's, it's different than geothermal. Geothermal is just, you're just taking the heat that's naturally already in the ground and using it. Whereas a climate battery, you're taking excess heat that you get and you're storing it down there to withdraw. So you can get greater amounts of heat than you would get with geothermal. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit different, and a lot of folks kind of misuse the names or mix those two up. Uh, but this here shows, this is actually at the four foot level. This here's the foundation, and you kind of see right here's the top yep. of that. Um, the grid of tubes. So they're, I've got four inch tubes. Those are kind of the, the most common diameter that's used for the heat exchanger part. And then I had six inch manifold tubes, and I ended up using six inch because that's just what I could get locally in the store the day I went. <laughs> you said you would have used eight. I would have definitely used eight. Um, I, and I did the calculations and looked at the trade offs at the time, but um, it, it would have been worth it to drive to Sioux Falls to get the right mm -hmm. size pipes. Mm -hmm. um, so, so now 
we have concrete and 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 insulation. Yes. Yep. So there's there's that concrete foundation here. You definitely don't have to do concrete, and I don't. I wouldn't recommend it in most circumstances. I did it because we're close to our house, and we might want to attach our house to the structure. And so you want to have something that you're not going to have building codes or insurance issues with mm -hmm. um, if you're going to do that. Uh, but, yeah, so it's, it's poured concrete. A lot of folks would, can, you could get by with no concrete and just the insulation. Yep. Some people will do that or concrete block people can do um, or uh, just pylons. Mm -hmm. So what's the recommended R value of the, the insulation for the, um, yeah. the battery? So it... it It'll depend on where you're at. So I did put together some some charts and stuff from the webinar and guidelines for folks. Uh, so uh, I have a four inch layer insulation on the uh, the outside of the foundation. That's something to that sometimes people will put it on the inside. You want it on the outside because then that foundation, that concrete is also part of your storage system. So it gives you a little bit more thermal mass. Um, and then I have also what's called a frost skirt. So it's just two feet out, the insulation runs, and that helps reduce the heat loss from your, your battery going around and uh, seeping mm. out that way. So because you've got the concrete on the inside and the insulation on the outside, your concrete will actually absorb some of that heat mm -hmm. and actually um, increase the value of that battery. Yep, yep. Yep, increases your storage size. The peak temperature that I saw throughout last year was I was able to get the ground temperature up to 75 degrees um, in by summertime. Now, one of the things I've seen with mine is it doesn't um, store heat fast enough. Like if I could do it again, I would put the tubes closer together. Okay, that's good because we were. That's one of our questions. Are you talking about? Down here, the, the distance between is two feet here. Yep. And you mentioned you'd go to 14 inches instead. Yep, yep. 10 to 14 inches would be a, a better. So you're talking about between tubes and not between the layers. You could you could also do it with the, between the layers. Oh, okay. So you could think of them as a grid if you're looking on the side. If you could space each of them 10 to 14 inches apart. Okay. And it, really what that does, it allows you to store heat faster. Mm -hmm. um, and that's that's the challenge you have is when when the sun comes out, it is so powerful and you're getting so much energy so fast in order to capture it. That's when you need the fast, fast heat transfer. You don't necessarily need it when you're withdrawing the heat. Usually you want mm -hmm. more of a slow, steady mm -hmm. heat withdrawal. But when you're putting it in the ground, that's what really dictates the spacing of the, the tubes and the airflow rates. So you can so get that it makes stored. sense. So more tubes equals more heat transfer faster, faster. Yep. Yep. yeah here um i know you mentioned in your um, webinar uh the difference between your passive solar greenhouse and a deep winter greenhouse for mm. example mm -hmm. and i noticed on the deep winter greenhouses that they have this is an insulated wow. wall yeah. and the other side is an insulated wall so what what was your reasoning for not doing a fully insulated wall there? Mm -hmm. Sidewalls. Yeah. Sidewalls, yeah. The east yeah. and west sides. Um, light. Okay. So you get you get more morning and um, late evening light into your structure. Uh, you could imagine if, if your greenhouse is really long, it's not quite as big of a deal. Mm -hmm. But if you're you're making a smaller, shorter structure then it's going to be more valuable because the plants that are growing along there don't get shaded. I was wondering if that was it and because of the shorter days. And mm -hmm. so, so then you're kind of maximizing the sun rising in the east and setting in the west. Yeah. And yeah. 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 So, you know, you'll get your sunrise heat is going to, is going to hit that and you're going to look at a little bit more. Okay. You can see the door. We didn't really talk about that. These are the linear actuators up there. They, when I have them turned on, the thermostat, this one here, I think I have it set at like 90 usually. When it's 90, they open up and vent out the hot air. But since end of November, I, I turned that system off because they don't really need to vent. The, our, our days were short enough and, and 
stuff that the, the climate battery was able to keep up with cooling. But really, mid-February, it's no longer able to do that. No matter how cold it is outside, our sunlight is, their days are long enough now, the sun angles are, are right, you, you get more, more heat than, than you can store. So that's when I start using the vents. 